Welcome, Investigator. Evil is on the rise. Crime is escalating. Our mission is to eliminate the crime by exposing evil, examine why it manifests, and highlight the brave souls that confront it every day. Join us as we work together to bring justice to every victim. Welcome to All Things Crime. Here's your host, Jared Bradley. Hey guys, it's Jared. Welcome to another episode of All Things Crime. And I tell you, I'm I'm pretty excited about today. It's a it's a great day already. First of all, I'm about ready to get on a plane to Australia, and I'm going to be able to go over to Sydney to uh, uh, train the New South Wales Police and uh, University over there on new MVAC systems. So how can it any day be bad when that's going to be happening, right? And second of all. I just got done interviewing Ann Bremner and Evan Berrialt of uh, Frybuck a Law Firm. And these guys were the primary lawyers, and, and there's there's others, obviously, but um, talked with those guys in, in general about the Susan Powell and Josh Powell case. And they were, they were some of the uh, attorneys that were involved with helping the Cox family win their lawsuit against the state of Washington after the two uh, Powell boys were murdered by, by their father, Josh. And wow, what an incredible discussion and uh, about a, an, an amazingly tragic case. And especially being from Utah, that is uh, near and dear to uh, everybody that lives here, as well as all of those up in the state of Washington, especially the Seattle area where, where the boys were murdered. And for all of you that are out there that are still searching for uh, Susan's Susan's remains, man, um, God bless you, and I can't tell you how much I you know appreciate your efforts and uh, continually praying that um, Susan will be brought home someday, and and ultimately the um, the victims in this case, obviously Susan and those two boys, will uh, not only receive full justice but also. Um, be compensated for it. And so I, I found out that amazingly, the state of Washington is appealing that case. And I'm like, oh, based on what? Um, I mean, to me, the evidence is just absolutely overwhelming that there is there is no way that any social worker who uh, would be, and, and not just the, the social worker, but the entire chain uh, all the way up to uh, the the upper echelons of the the state um, child welfare folks there in Washington should the red flags were everywhere and there's absolutely no excuse for um, a, enabling what had what had happened there. So, but I, I I wanted to talk a little bit not only about that and and kind of preface those episodes that are coming out and they'll they'll be coming out here in the next couple of weeks. And so I hope all of you hit the subscribe button and uh, that bell so that you don't miss an episode. The, I promise these um, these discussions that I just had about the, the you know, with Ann and Evan are, you are gonna love them. And so definitely subscribe and uh, and share it with your friends because I, I, I think this is gonna be some of the best episodes that I've ever talked about. So, but also, uh, I, I wanted to kind of shift gears a little bit and talk ab about my journey to Australia, what's enabled my flight um, and, and my trip that's starting here in just a couple hours. So as when you're reading this, or, or I'm sorry, when you're uh, listening or, or viewing this, most likely I'm either going to be on the plane or... Um, at a minimum, I'm going to be in Australia, you know, as as uh, I I upload this. So um, I'm really excited about about uh, not not only the episodes that are coming out, but but also talking about this. So I want to I want to throw this out and I want you guys thinking about this because this is a contrast that I think is absolutely staggering. And for those of you that care at all about your security now. I also have a newsletter on LinkedIn. So if you're not subscribed to that newsletter, I, I think that also might be of interest to you uh, in the because I talk about a lot of technology, a lot of the the true crime uh, genre in there, you know, because that's that's uh, my my professional life. So uh, obviously that's that's what I'm talking about all the time. But the in that newsletter in the last um, 
I think I put it out like two weeks ago. I talked so I I was watching the latest Matrix movie, and I, for those of you that aren't fans of of the Matrix, um, that the the original trilogy plus um, the the latest movie, I think it's called Resurrections, that has just come out. Um, shame on you. <laughs> I'm just just kidding you, but I, I've I've always been a sci-fi freak. And so, you know, listen, or watching watching the Matrix was just an absolute must, and and I have, I've loved them. I've seen each one of those movies. I don't know how many times, but I I was on a on a flight. What a surprise! And I was on a flight uh, not too long ago, and the Matrix uh, Resurrections was available. I'd heard a little bit about it, but I wasn't excited enough to actually go and watch it in the in the movie theaters, and so. Uh, I, I was watching it on the plane and, you know, who had, when you have three or four hours to kill, you know, there's only so much work you can get done on these planes and then, um, watch a little bit of the news. And then obviously you just want to kind of veg out and, and check out basically. And so I, I turned this movie on now while I'm watching a movie, of course I want, it's like mindless entertainment. And so that's, I, it's just kind of a way to just go into your, into your, uh, mental cave and, and just kind of check out from everything else that's going on in the world. And, but I, I'm also, especially because of this show and because of all the things that I'm uh, doing in with MVAC systems and, and, but all, also all the stuff that I do on social media and, and LinkedIn and things like that. I'm, I, I'm always looking for little bits and pieces that uh, it's amazing that once in a while, um, Hollywood actually nails it. And th there was a, so there's, there's a captain of one of the ships there. And it's, it's, a, she, the, the captain is actually played by Jada uh, Pinkett Smith, which is kind of ironic, but she, she has a line in that movie and she basically says scarcity breeds violence. And that, that hit me really hard because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of scarcity uh, that's kind of creeping, especially into the U S right now, uh, you know, being the land of plenty, the thought of scarcity and like right now there's a shortage of baby formula and who would have ever thought that in today's day and age in the United States, you would have a shortage of baby formula and the alarm bells are going off left and right. And I, I don't know all the causes behind it, but I have some pretty good ideas. And some of the ideas are, um, well, anyway, I, I, I don't want to get too deep into the, into the political arena of it. But uh, one of the things that when you think about uh, scarcity breeds violence, uh, one of the things that I'm writing about in this newsletter is there's, there's scarcity of jobs, there's sca scarcity of opportunity, but another major aspect of uh you know, causes of, of actual violence is a scarcity of security. Now, anybody that's listening to this, that is an adult, I would bet a year's paycheck that you lock your doors on, of your home. You have locks on the bathroom because who wants to be disturbed when you're in the bathroom doing your thing, right? So why would you put a lock on your bathroom and a lock on your house and a lock on your car. Uh, many of us have lock boxes where we secure weapons, we secure jewelry, we secure everything. Anything that you want to secure that is valuable to you, you put a lock on it. And you and, and if and if it's required multiple layers of of security, then um, like your your family, for example, you know you you will you will have multiple layers of security in order to safeguard the things that are most valuable to you, including your family. And that is why uh, many people have, I, you know, multiple locks on, on all the doors. They'll have alarm systems. They will have uh, fences around their yard. You know, it's the, the, the concept of a castle in medieval times and the way it was built and the way it has, you know, moats and then walls and then uh, spikes and, and all sorts of, and then multiple, uh, walls inside of the, the out, outer walls. Uh, and then you have the keep in the middle, which is the last, uh, you know, fortress that 
that anybody that wants to to kill the the occupants, you know, they have to go through all of these layers. Well, <clears throat> mankind has always done that. And the the reason I bring this up is because I swear uh I I I don't know how many layers of security that I had to go through in order to get my visa to make it into Australia. And frankly, I have to, my, my hat goes off to the Australians because they are doing this right. As a country, Australia obviously cares about the safety and the security of their citizens, the, the safety and security of their, uh, their country as a whole, their culture, everything about it. Let me give you an example. In order to get a visa, now you would think uh, it, with the relationship that Australia and the United States has and our history together, that it would you would consider Australians a, as allies, right? I mean, yeah, we're we're separated by an ocean and we're separated by a common language. <laughs> Can't wait to hear their accent, man! I love Australian accents. So, um, but at the same time. When I applied for my visa, and first of all, I was supposed to actually go to Australia in March, but because I had not uh, read the instructions carefully enough, and I didn't apply uh, with enough time, and I, I'm not even sure that I, I had enough time between when I actually uh, scheduled the trip and, and um, uh, when I, well, when I knew that I was going to go and then I had... The, the, the trip scheduled. But regardless, in applying for the visa as an American, you know, not even in, in, in an allied country. Um, so think about this, especially in comparison to the United States borders right now, especially our southern border. Okay. So think about this. In order for me to get a visa to go to Australia, I had to submit my marriage license because I had to prove that there was somebody still in the United States that I wanted to come home to. I had to submit three months worth of uh, pay subs to show that I was employed, that I could um, not only provide for myself while I was in country, but that I uh, also had uh, something to return to. And that if anything happened to me, the the company, you know, the MVAC systems would, would pay for my, um, my healthcare there. Uh, I had to provide, as a veteran, I had to provide my DD-214, which is uh, my military records. And the, the, and then it was 19 pages of information that I had to answer, including uh, a COVID test and uh, a health survey and all this information just to get a visa, just to get permission to go into the country. I had to provide all of this. And then it took two months for the Australian government to review all of that. And I'm, I'm assuming it's just because they're backlogged and, you know, COVID has kind of thrown everything into a, a wrench into everything. And so, uh, you know, every, everything's kind of taken longer. But regardless, it took two months for me to get my visa. As an American, it took me two months to get into a, a close ally of Australia to get the visa to, to get permission to get into that country. Because on the first trip, I thought the visa was going to be really fast. I mean, I've applied for visas the same day and been able to get into other countries, you know, like Thailand and things like that. But in Australia, they are obviously very, very concerned and they want to vet, heavily vet the people that are coming into their country. And why would they do that? Well, clearly a lot of people want to get into Australia. Uh, they have, you know, free healthcare and all these other things there that uh, are a draw from uh, not necessarily first world countries. So a lot of people want to go to Australia and being a, they, they have a huge advantage that they are in an island and it's not easy to get there. They don't just have a southern border where people can just walk through. But even with that, they are heavily vetting everybody that comes into their country. And especially during COVID, I know if you are in a boat and you just floated up to their border, you know, here in the United States, if you can make it to the shores and you step onto a beach, then you're basically, you're, you're allowed to stay at least until they can, you can go through the, the court system. But it's not that way in, the, in Australia and kudos to them for that. Um, 
But my, my question is, why would they do that? Why would they be so stringent on vetting who they let into the country? Well, it's because of security. It's because they care who is coming into their country. And I'm sure if you wanted to uh, migrate into Australia, I, I know there's lots of different uh, people from all different cultural and, and national backgrounds that once you are, are, are allowed into Australia legally, they welcome you with open arms, which is the way it should be. If, if it's done legally and it's done right and they have a chance to vet you and you're going to be uh, a, a, an ad, advantage to the country, you are going to assimilate and you're going to actually become Australian, then I, I, I know, you know one of my good friends over there is Chinese. Uh, I, I know other people that have uh, Middle Eastern backgrounds. And so Australians, just like Americans, welcome you with open arms when you come in legally. And But the, the difference between what the United States is doing or not doing, actually, is what the way we should say it. I mean, there is no security at our border. We have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people just sitting in Mexico right now waiting for Title 42 to end, and they are going to rush the border. I don't know if some of you understand what 18,000 people a day coming into our country means. Uh, I, I, I live in uh, a smaller community in Utah, and basically we're looking at uh, our entire community coming across the border every day. That is insane. And the, the concept of security goes completely out the window. And I think it's, it's, it's not only sick and wrong, but it's extremely ironic that the very uh, people that are talking the most about security, uh, they have personal security. They have, uh, you know, many of them have hired, um, you know, if they don't have like Secret Service or, or something like that, then they'll have personal security, armed guards around them. They have uh, walls around their homes. They have gated communities. They have all this personal security. And yet when they are in charge of our entire country, it's it's open borders come on in. And it's just sick. It just makes me sick to my stomach because ultimately, and again, that's a, a, a big part of what this show is about, is describing the process of the law enforcement and the legal uh, entities that, that um, uh, you, you know, the steps that people have to go through in order to receive justice. And if you look back at what is most important to all of us, it's security. You know, uh, in the military, we learned when we went into a new location, you know, we were moving the company or, or you know, we're moving forward. You find a new, um, a new spot for your um, company or, or platoon, whatever, whatever size of an element you're in. The absolute very first thing you do is you establish security. That comes before eating. That comes before sleeping comes before, you know, weapons, it comes before anything. You establish security because without security, nothing else matters. And I'm telling you, the only country in the world right now that has completely porous open borders and basically zero security for their citizens is the United States. And yet we are the most, I, I just today I learned that Congress approved $40 billion to go to Ukraine to help Ukraine repel uh, the, the Russians that are invading their country and, and re-secure their borders, re-secure their lands. And yet our border, so we're $40 billion. It's like we, I, a number of years ago, Congress wouldn't even approve $5 billion for our entire southern border. And so, and yet we're sending Ukraine 40 billion. It's like, where, I don't know, where are our priorities? It is just mind boggling to me. I, I feel for the Ukrainian people and uh, one of our good friends is Ukrainian and I know her family is over there. And so uh, I, I, everything that's happening over there is tragic. But at the same time, the, when, when you look at what we're willing to do for Ukraine, and then also compare what 
Australia is doing to secure their borders and to secure their citizens compared to what is happening in the United States right now. It's, um, it's, it's not only a stark difference, but it's, it's tragic and, and it's sick. And um, I hope this coming November, we all remember what is going on right now. And, and hopefully things don't get a lot worse, but I, I just, nothing good is going to come from this. And when you, again, when everyday citizens in the United States, and I'll tell you right now what's going to happen. If we have no security that is provided by our government, we're going to provide it ourselves. And that's going to get ugly. And I, cause I know what I'm going to do. And I'll tell you as a veteran and as a, a strong believer in the second amendment, uh, I'll tell you flat out, uh, nobody better break into my house. And I know there are millions and millions of men and women out there in the United States that feel the same way. But when you allow hundreds of, I mean, again, 18,000 people a day. So you're talking hundreds of thousands per month, millions per year of unvetted, completely clueless. I mean, there is no way anybody can know who is coming across there. And the thought that some, I don't know what percent, but even if it's 5%, 5% of a million people is a lot of people. And that's a lot of dangerous people that are coming across our, our, our southern border. And when they come, they are going to resort to, to crime. And the, the level of crime is rising already. And, you know, part of it's MS-13. Part of it is, is uh, just people that come across. They think they're going to get a job. They can't get a job. They can't, they, they can't survive anymore. Uh, government welfare isn't, isn't helping them enough. What are they going to do? They're going to turn to violence. Some people that are coming across um, and are being literally flown into the country um, are, are they have absolutely no interest in assimilating into the United States. And so they're going to come here. They view us as uh, these pampered um, people that that um, we've been given everything on a silver spoon. And so they, they, it's, it's like in one of those, uh, episodes that I did a number of months ago, uh, called the, uh, the three levels of evil and the evil, the beast and the buffet. And one of those levels of evil is just somebody that, that feels they're entitled to your stuff. And that is absolutely going to happen. And as that happens again, that lack of security is going to breed violence. And the violence that um, it's, it's going to be perpetrating onto the, the citizens of the United States, as well as the, the people that are immigrating here, that have all these uh, false impressions of, of what they think there's going to happen once they get here, um, none of it is going to lead to good. And I, I'm just, we, we need to prepare ourselves, folks. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but at the same time, I'm a realist. And, uh, we, um, we're in for some really hard times. So I just wanted to throw that out at you guys and, and have you think about it a little bit. And as we go along into, uh, further episodes, then you can, um, hopefully remember this episode and, and the way we talked. And, uh, again, compare your own physical security to what's happening with the United States. And, and it should be the same, the same level and same care and same, uh, intensity and, um, resources that you put into your personal security and what you do to, to secure your family should be what is happening, uh, everywhere. And especially on the nation, you know, the nation's borders, because, uh, if they're not secure, then we don't have a nation. And all right, guys, well, Hey, um, enjoy. And most importantly, uh, subscribe and then uh, hit the bell. So you don't miss these, uh, upcoming episodes. Uh, especially talking about the uh, Susan Powell case. So you guys take care. Talk to you later. Thanks for joining us. Your attention today brings us one step closer to exposing and eliminating the evil that brings crime to our communities. Hit subscribe and share this episode. Together, we will bring justice to every victim.